these are not new thoughts for you. Um, I did my homework and looked at your commencement speeches from 1989 and 2003, where you also received an honorary degree. So Dr. Neal, uh, I'm gonna ask you to comment on something you said a long time ago, which is always dangerous, right? But I, I think that you'll remember that you talked about the greatest threat to democracy is us being divisive. And you mentioned it in your opening comments as well. So there is a fine line between disagreeing and being divisive. If you were, be, if you were talking to my class and after Congressman Neal or Dr. Neal answers, I'll open it back up. If you were talking to this group of uh, 20 and 21 year olds and many of you have children that age or have grandchildren that age, what would you tell them? How would you navigate the right world of, of, of res being responsive, being accountable? We heard that earlier. Um, but disagreeing in a healthy manner. So I open it up to what characteristics and how do you respond to that dichotomy uh, between agitation and moving things forward? I'll start with Congressman Neal and then we'll open it up. Well, I'm just finishing a really fine book and it is uh, called Lincoln on the Verge. And Lincoln was not just a public servant, he was a very skilled politician. When you consider his achievement at winning the nomination, he was nobody's first choice, but he was everybody's second choice. Got elected president with about 39% of the vote. 1% of the vote in Virginia, by the way, probably less than some of the other uh, Southern states. But they decided that uh, in the moment of great turbulence, because after the Dred Scott decision, as you know, we're going to civil war. There's no going back, the clouds have gathered. And the point that uh, the author makes, Widmer, is that Lincoln decides that as an act of national healing, he is gonna take a train, a series of trains from Springfield, Illinois, through the heartland and engage hundreds of thousands of people along the way. States have seceded from the union. The inaugural gap from September, October until the election in November, and then the swearing in at that time was March 4th. So these six months were awful for the country. But Lincoln believes that symbolism is important. He needs to show the world that the American people are up to the challenge. And he gives a series of, as I'm reading them, and I have followed every word I think he's ever offered, he gives a series of healing comments along the way. It takes the oath, sees us through the Civil War, and always for him, it was an act of rebellion, not a civil war. Advised time and again to let the Southern states maintain slavery and come back to the Union, and he says under no circumstances. And the inaugural address that he gives, which I'm looking at the stairs here, by the way, if I turn to my right, in 1865, with malice toward none and charity for all. Now he qualified that, certainly as it related to Jefferson Davis, or Robert E. Lee, he never forgave them. But he said to the rest of the American people, you're back in union. And I think that oftentimes the words that we use can be so charged and incendiary that they push people away. So if we can find a healing moment, nothing wrong with a little bit of invective from time to time to make your point. Uh, but the carnage that comes of ill-chosen words when perhaps a softer touch might bring people aboard, makes a great deal of sense. 